Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're talking about half-lives. What we're going to do is first we're going to look at radioactive decay briefly, and then we'll use that to understand what a half-life is. Then we'll look at various radioactive samples and think about how much will be remaining after different amounts of time. And we can do all of that if we understand the half-life. So first, what is radioactive decay? Well, radioactive decay happens whenever we have an unstable nucleus. So here we have uranium-238, which is an unstable nucleus. After so often, every so often, it will emit an alpha particle. So uranium is just sitting there, chilling out, and then it shoots off this thing called an alpha particle. And when it shoots off that alpha particle, it changes what it is. It becomes thorium. So it doesn't disappear, right? It becomes a new element, thorium. Thorium-234 has two less protons and two less neutrons. So over time, our uranium is converted into thorium. And that means if we have a big block of uranium, after a certain amount of time, all of it will become thorium. Half-Life asks the question, how long will it take for just half of it to become thorium? And if we want to think about that, we really need to think about a sample of uranium, not just one nuclei. So here we have a bunch of uranium-238 nuclei. And the question we're asking is, how long will it take for half of these to decay? If we were sitting there watching it, maybe we would see, okay, this one decays a little bit later, this one decays a little bit later, this one decays a little bit later, this one, this one, this one, this one, and eventually we'll get to something like half of the nuclei decayed. Okay? How long will that take? Well, it turns out for half of the nuclei to decay into thorium, it takes a really long time for uranium. Uranium-238 will take four and a half billion years. So a long time. Four and a half billion years for uranium-238 to decay into half of its former quantity. All right? Now, the half-life varies by uh, different nuclei. So, for example, plutonium-238 has a half-life of about 90 years. Pretty short. Carbon-14 has a half-life in the thousands of years. Some things have half-lives less than a second. So this can vary all over the place. And what makes it vary is how stable the nucleus is. The less stable the nucleus, the more rapidly it decays. So now let's take a look at plutonium, which we're told has a half-life of 90 years. So it will decay into something else. It doesn't tell us what, and that's okay, in 90 years. And all we're going to do in this first problem is count how many half-lives have gone by. So the idea is we know every 90 years, plutonium-238 will half. And in A, B, C, and D, we have different time periods. That's different amounts of time that have passed since we started with our initial chunk of uranium. So in A, it asks, how many half-lives have gone by if 90 years have gone by? So I'm recording this in 2020, right? That means how many half-lives have gone by for a chunk of uranium, which we had around in 1930? And the answer is just one. We can get that either by seeing that 90 matches 90, pretty straightforward, we can always divide by our half-life. So we take the period that we're interested in and divide by the half-life. So that would be 90 divided by 90, or one half-life. All right, pretty straightforward. For 900 years, again, we can divide by the half-life, or you might just see, hey, that's 10 times the half-life. And so we'll get 900 divided by 90, or 10 half-lives. So we're always going to substitute whatever our particular half-life is down here on the bottom and divide by it. Here, we have 45 years that have gone by, and we're going to divide that by 90. And that would give us one half of a half-life. So less than a half-life. Of course, that's possible also. 450 years, so about the time since 1500-ish, how many half-lives have gone by for that plutonium? 450 divided by 90 gives us five half-lives. So this is how we count how many half-lives have gone by. And once we've done that, we can readily determine how much is remaining at each point. Sometimes this requires an equation, and sometimes it doesn't. We're going to do one example with an equation, but most of these you don't need one, actually. Okay, so now we're given those same time periods. Our years are the same, but we're told that there's 50 grams of plutonium-238. And we want to know how much will remain after each of the following periods. Here's our formula for how much radioactive isotope will remain. Here, N0 represents our initial quality, so that was our 50 grams. Nt is what we want to find. That's our final quantity that we have at the end of this time period. T1 half, like we said before, is half-life. 
So T1 half is our half-life. So for our plutonium, we've said that's 90 years. The time period that is half that has passed is just what we're interested in. So on the previous page, we did A through D. Each of those had a different time period. And the one we're particularly interested in is the one for 45 years, which we can't solve very easily uh, in our heads. Okay, so if initially there are 50 grams of plutonium-238, how much plutonium will remain after each of the following time periods? And we're just looking at the 45 years. And remember that our T1 half for plutonium is 90 years. So all we're going to do is we're going to plug that into our equation and solve for NT, which is the amount remaining. So N0, remember, is 50 grams times 1 half, raised to the T, that's the amount of time that has passed by, 45, divided by T1 half, that's our half-life, which is 90. Notice this looks kind of familiar, right? This is what we did just on the previous page. We did 50 times 1 half, raised to whatever power we needed. Turns out the power we need in this case is 1 half. 50 times 1 half raised to the 1 half. That's because when I divide 45 by 90, I get 1 half. So if I plug that into my calculator, then I will get 35.35 grams. And if I round to one sig fig, I get 40 grams. So you can see that I can't just quarter it, right? So you might have been tempted to say, hey, if half a half-life went by, that's a quarter. But we can't do that. That will actually not give us the right answer. So instead, we have to use this equation when we have those uneven terms. Okay, thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, leave them below.